Hey, Will here from aerialmediapros.com, back with another tech video for you guys. Today we're going to be walking you through how to set up the Ronin through the Ronin app on the iPhone. But before we get started, please be sure to balance your camera by following our Ronin balancing tutorial. But if you've already done so, then let's get started. Alright, first things first, we want to start off with the gimbal portion of the Ronin. Uh, we want to first go off into motor, and then right off the bat we want to do auto-tune stability. This will give us a rough estimate on where our stiffness needs to be for this camera. Uh, it, it will be determined on the weight of the camera, but you can also change it for uh, certain situations where you're in high wind, like when you mount it on a car, or if you're just going to be running down a hallway or something like that, and you don't need it to be as stiff. So there's always a threshold, and I usually find that lower is always better. So you can always change that to your liking and experiment with it. And then down here you have the live data for the power of the motors and the angle of the motor. Uh, for the power portion of it, you want to be as close to zero as possible. That means your camera is balanced and the motors aren't working as hard to keep the, the camera still. All right, now on to smooth track mode. Um, smooth track mode is on. Smooth tracking allows the camera operator to be in control of the camera free of a secondary controller. So this allows the cameraman to be independent uh, and move the camera on his own. Uh, we got adjustments down here for the pan and tilt axis. We got speed. This is the final speed of the gimbal as it moves, 100 being the fastest, and then we got zero being the slowest. Actually, one is the slowest. Zero is non-existent. Uh, one is the slowest. Just take it back up. And then we got deadband limits. Uh, deadband limit is the movement of the camera to match the movement of the camera operator. So at a higher deadband uh, value, you increase the size of the window at which the camera can move freely. At a smaller value, the window is more limited and the camera will relax sooner to movement. So we got deadband values all the way down to one. And then you can raise that all the way to 90. So this is a bigger threshold. We also have accelerator. Uh, it's how quickly the gimbal will react once the camera hits the dead band angle. Uh, just like the speed, 100 is the fastest, 0 is the slowest. Um, as you can see, uh, when we have it all the way up to 100, the gimbal will react very fast. And then once we bring it down all the way to 0, it will bring it back up the speed very slowly. And then we also have test pan speed down here. So you can see the final speed. And then you can test tilt speed as well. All right, now we're gonna go over to the controller section of the gimbal. This is specifically for the remote control and the onboard controller that has not come out for the DJI Ronin, but will be soon. Uh, we disabled the tilt, but everything we do for the pan will have a section for the tilt and be able to adjust it that way. Okay, first off, we wanna to go to dead band. This will actually control the sensitivity of the stick. So if you notice right here, if you move it just about a notch, you get a pretty slow movement, but it could definitely be slower. And we can turn that all the way up to 100. And then we get a very slow crawl at about the same notch. Okay, going back, we can go to maximum speed. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is just the maximum speed of the gimbal, zero being the slowest or one being the slowest. Let's just set it to 10. So you can see how slow that is now. I'm taking the stick fully to one side and the other. And then we can speed it up all the way to 100. And we can see the gimbal moves very fastly now. Now smoothing is basically like a, a feather effect. So you can see how jerky the gimbal is. 
and just moves very quickly with the stick. Uh, we can turn that all the way up just so you can see the drastic side of it, all the way up to 30. And we, we can see how long it takes for it to get up to speed and how it drifts, even when I let go of the stick. Just take that all the way back down to three. And now we got endpoints. This is basically the angle that we have. So we got 90 and 90 right there. So that's effectively a 180 degree. And we can even test the pan endpoints. So there we go. That's about 180 degrees. Uh, we can even lower that. Let's do 45. And now uh, let's test pan endpoints. And now we got a smaller window. Let's bring that back up. We also have test tilt endpoints, and this is very important for especially this camera since we got the red brick on the back end of there. Uh, if we didn't have the, the up position right here to 30 degrees, the, actually the red brick will hit the back of the Ronin there. And then we got channel mapping. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. just uh, shows you which channel is moving what, um, what switch is moving. And then you can always reverse or, uh, or tell which one is pan, tilt, or roll, or switch them around. Then here we have settings. Uh, right off the bat on the top one, we got controller priority. So this is gonna tell the gimbal which one or which signal is gonna override what, whether the remote operator is gonna override the onboard controller or vice versa. We also have pan, tilt, uh, remote speed control. Uh, this is the adjustment so that we can um, have a switch up here, which will slow it or have a medium setting or have a very fast setting. Um, we can have that the pan and tilt combined and then we can also have it independent Okay, now we can go on to viewer right here uh, Basically, it's just a timed graph where you can see the power of the motors and then along with the angle of the motors and Then you down here. You got voltage of the battery. You have the temperature in the room or of the Ronin um, You got also the time that the Ronin has been up. We've been up for 12 minutes um, we can go over here to more. Uh, we got right off the bat briefcase mode. We can disable that or enable that. Uh, we can kill motors, which is very important if you're trying to balance a new camera on there and the gimbals are the gimbal is just freaking out and you can't get to the settings. You can't turn it off. So you kill the motors so you can get to the settings, change them, and then turn the motors back on. Very important. And then we also got calibrate center. Uh, basically what we got to do is calibrate center, move the Ronin to center right about there, hit center, and then we got to power cycle the Ronin. And then turn it back on. And then also we got calibrate system as well, where you can calibrate the whole system to the camera that you have on there. Then also you have restore default settings in case anything goes wrong. All right, guys, that's it for this Ronin tutorial video. Hopefully this was helpful to some of you guys out there. If you like these products like the Ronin gimbal or the RED camera, these are available at aerialmediapros.com along with all the Ronin parts and accessories that you'll need. Go ahead and like this video if you like it. Please leave a comment for any future tech videos that you guys want. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.